You know, over the years, we've worked to pass various laws to prevent some of the worst cruelties. You know, for example, we've been able to outlaw the use of gestation crates, which are two foot wide metal enclosures, veal crates, two foot wide wooden enclosures where young veal calves are chained by the neck, and battery cages where egg laying hens are confined so tightly they can't even stretch their wings. So we've been able to outlaw those in a few states, and we've generally done this with the use of the initiative process, which allows people to vote. And the reason we had to do that was because whenever we would introduce legislation to prevent some of these cruel practices, it would be referred to the Agriculture Committee, either in the state capitol or in Washington, D.C. And the Agriculture Committee is made up of lawmakers very friendly to agribusiness. So we never got a fair hearing. So we had to take this to the people through an initiative where you collect signatures, put a measure on the ballot for a popular vote. And so we've done that, we've had some success. But those laws, frankly, are quite minimal. They only give animals enough space to turn around. And we need a fundamental shift. And I think it's important for policies to change, but it's also important for the marketplace to signal where people want to go and for citizens to be more mindful, more conscientious, and not just to eat the foods they grew up eating without thinking about it. And that is starting to happen right now. Um, some of the fundamental policies I think that need to change though in Washington and also at the state level have to do with enabling this animal-based food system and externalizing costs associated with it. So when a factory farm pollutes the environment, they should be accountable to clean up the mess. There shouldn't be taxpayer support for that. Uh, animal agriculture should pay the fair cost for water and other inputs like corn and soybeans, which are heavily subsidized right now and used for feed for, for farm animals. So the main policies that I think should be changed in the near future, hopefully, would be those that enable and prop up this industry. Um, another thing that happens is that taxpayer money is used to buy excess production of things like cheese, for example. The government just bought $20 million of excess cheese to support the dairy industry. And besides financially supporting the dairy industry, by buying that cheese, the government is also promoting it because it's going to now feed that cheese to school kids and others who are on assistance programs. So the government is enabling this industry and also marketing and promoting this industry. And I think that needs to stop. I, I think the intent of government programs is to create a stable business environment for farmers because some years are much better than others. You have a bumper crop and then you have a drought and you have a very difficult year in some cases. So the government's intent is to sort of stabilize that and give farmers risk management tools so that they can grow food and basically be guaranteed that they're going to make a profit. The problem has been that you have big businesses that are recognizing this and are taking advantage of these risk protection tools and profiting from them. They realize that they can make very risky uh, decisions and if they made the wrong decision that they're, they're going to be covered. So you have um, policies that were intended to help, in many cases, small farmers, but they're being exploited by large businesses who are able to capitalize and make decisions uh, that are very risky but without risk because the government is there to bail them out. So in Living the Farm Sanctuary Life, we talk about encouraging people to make choices and to live in a way that is aligned with their own values and their own interests. And most people are humane, so most people would rather not support cruelty and unnecessary violence and killing. And most people would also, I think, rather eat food that is nourishing and doesn't make us sick. That's very much in our interest to do that and also to support a food system that doesn't destroy the planet the way animal agriculture does. Unfortunately, we grow up in the United States and in many developed countries eating food that comes from animals who are horribly abused. And so we say, don't tell me, I don't want to know because it feels bad. We don't like it. It's not aligned with our compassionate values. So we live in this way, this sort of dissonant way and, and I think there's some stress that comes with that, and it's not healthy. 
Uh, we also are eating animal foods and processed foods that make us sick. And so that's not in our interest. Um, and the good news is, though, that we can choose to eat a whole foods, plant-based diet and avoid all that animal suffering, avoid many health problems that have become rampant in the U.S. And we can also support a food system that's not destroying the planet the way animal agriculture is. So through our food choices, we can have profound impacts on our own health, as well as on the lives of billions of animals and on the planet itself. The United Nations put out a report a couple years ago talking about how animal agriculture is one of the top contributors to the most serious environmental problems we're facing. So our food choices uh, are very important to pay attention to, but most of us grow up, develop habits about food, assume that what we're doing is normal and appropriate in the way it's supposed to be. But I think we need to, to examine that and, and ask ourselves if our food choices are in fact working for us, working for the planet, are they good or not? And if they're not, we should make, think about making changes. And, and the good news is we can each be empowered to make changes. There are many things in this world that are outside of our control. There's wars, there's violence, there's all kinds of awful things happening that human beings are part of in many cases. But we are oftentimes quite removed from a lot of those. But when it comes to our food choices, every day each of us has a lot of control over that. And those choices have a big impact on our own health and on the health of the planet. So it's something that um, I think people can take heart from, people can be empowered by, people can ultimately then become encouraging advocates by eating in a certain way and improving their own health. There have been a number of times when I've met people who've told me that they've lost a lot of weight, they've gotten off of heart medication, their lives have changed physically, but also their outlook has changed. So emotionally, by eating better and improving their health, uh, they've in improved also their mental health. And, and that's a whole other thing about food that we, I think, sometimes don't really talk a lot about is the emotional attachments that come with it. And um, that's one reason I think that changing can be so hard because people have this attachment to food and the emotions that come around it. Um, but when we look at it and step back and ask ourselves if those are healthy emotions, um, if the food is healthy and good for us, then oftentimes it makes sense to, to shift and, and to change. And that is scary. Uh, even if we're doing something that is better for us, if it's not familiar, it can be very scary. Uh, but when you start taking small steps, those often lead to more steps. And over time, those can create big changes.